I'm not into toe. Are you into feet? You know what? I'm not into it. I wouldn't say I have a fetish, but if I'm into somebody, I'm into their whole body. Okay. Like, I'm gonna explore everywhere. Just call me Dora, bitch. <laughs> Oh, that's hysterical, Dora, bitch. All right, now. Hello, it's Bianca Del Rio, and we're here back at the Pit Stop, where we recap another episode of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15. And today I am joined by a woman who serves body and face, and she's also known to be a messy f bitch. Let's welcome Miss Mariah Balenciaga. Before you get excited, let's just say this. She is a Balenciaga, but not connected for legal reasons to Balenciaga, Balenciaga. How are you? I'm better now that you had the disclaimer. We had to clear it up. We had I to clear it up. I appreciate that. I don't need anyone online badgering you or hounding you for that It was not your fault. I love the fact that people think that I'm in the tax bracket of being on the creative team at the House of Balenciaga. <laughs> They obviously have not met you in person. At all. When you know you trace it back on the internet and then you realize somebody just did a Google search of yeah. Balenciaga and I was at the top with the fashion house and they all just tagged me and everything. It's been, if I cared enough, I would say it was a nightmare, but mm. I really don't. Well, that's pretty interesting because you know, I had to Google you today to know who the f you were. <laughs> So, fill us in. What's going on in life and what's going on right now? Oh, this year I'm being inducted into the Dorian Corey Hall of Fame. Oh, so fabulous! I've often said you belong in a museum. Oh. <laughs> I mean, not physically, but you are being honored. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And you've been in the ballroom scene for quite some time now. 23 years. 23. Yes. 20, you don't even get that for murder. 23 years. Well, those of you who are internationally watching, in America, you can kill somebody and get off. Speaking of, like, fabulosity, yes. I can tell you're wearing the ones that look like socks. Okay, the, this this is the common occurrence here. And what's interesting is that all of you bitches are just jealous. I have to say it yet once again, is that I've had footwork done. I've had oh. footwork done. I've had foot surgery done. I've had my toes pumped. I recently came back from Paraguay. Paraguay, yeah, you've been to the doctor. Mm. Detox gave me the number for a doctor to get my toes pumped because actually this spring I will be sporting some plumpalicious feet in some open toe shoes. Oh. Because I don't know if you know this, it's all on trend. And the idea here is that there's nothing prettier than an open toe shoe on a big man hoof. <laughs> that, that's the new cleavage? That is. The, the new cleavage? Toe cleavage, honey. Pumped, 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 pumped. Pump. Well, you know, I went down to Paraguay uh, last fall. Mm -hmm. and Explains the smell. I got my earlobes done. You did! I was gonna say, when I saw you earlier, they look a little fat and juicy. Some of the girls, you know, they get their lips done, you yeah. know, they get the fillers. No, yeah. I wanted my lobes. You've got to be careful. I wanna f you in your ear and then you'll be stuck with hearing aids. <laughs> Can't use that either, can you? Can't use that. <laughs> Here we are, we are now season 15. 15, here we are again. 15. 15. Did you think back then that we would be here at this point? No, after season three, I thought we were canceled for sure. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I found in all 15 years of RuPaul's Drag Race, there's only two things that are guaranteed. Spill it. There's gonna be a snatch game, uh -huh. and you gotta figure out how to sew something. <laughs> As of now. Oh. Yeah, I might know something you don't know. <laughs> Kidding, I don't know shit. I don't know shit. I've heard you have insight. Stop it. Who told you that? I don't remember. Oh. All right, are you ready to dive into this? I've got my scuba gear. <laughs> Let's do it. Have you been enjoying the season so far? I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of interesting characters. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have my Sanderson sister moment. I'm mm -hmm. gonna siphon off their life force okay. because all of these people, all these queens are baby. They are, don't, don't you feel old watching the kids? I feel older. Are you familiar with a woman by the name of Miss Sasha Colby? Who isn't? Okay, but I have a story about that. Spill so it. before I actually met Sasha Colby, like I knew her from competing in Continental, of course. Of course. Just like everybody else. But before I met Sasha Colby, Facebook, I had to remember which social media site. I know. But Facebook would tag me and her in each other's pictures. No. And so as soon as we finally did meet at a club in West Hollywood, we just immediately called each other twin. Isn't that fabulous? And you know, it's one of those things where when you finally meet a queen, yeah. I was not disappointed. She was everything I expected and more. See, that's a good thing. It's rare. Hey, Barry! Because when I first met you, <laughs> it was a different experience. <laughs> all right, Mariah, are you ready to get into this? I'm ready to slide all the way in. Oh, you better do it. Luke? No, I like it dry. With a little bit of spit. Last week, Lux won her 
first design challenge, and sadly, we had to say goodbye to Amethyst. Now, do you agree with the judges and how things played out? Actually, I do. I expected Amethyst to go home, uh, and I feel bad about that because, you know, Amethyst is my birthstone. Mm -hmm. So I really expected her to shine. And, you know. <laughs> So we saw that Selena was a little shaken by having to lip sync. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking, do you think being shaken is a good motivator to get out there and turn the party? I think it's very important to shake things up. It's yeah. just like, that's what makes the chicken better. You stick it in a brown paper bag and you Another shake analogy. it really good. Another analogy, now we're doing shake and bake. Yeah. And you know, and you, you want to get that seasoning all over and then stick it in the oven and then you really get to sink your teeth into it. But wait a minute, what if you're a white person who don't know how to season? What am I saying? All people can't season. I mean, what if? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Malaysia, who was at the top, and she had never sewn an outfit before. What did you think about her House of Matthews look? This is another one that I can relate to and identify with. I'm not a seamstress, even yep. though I, I grew up, my mom was a seamstress yeah. and had the sewing machine, but it was the mechanics of it. It just never, my mind doesn't work like that. Yeah. So I understand having to make something out of nothing without mm -hmm. that specific skill set of knowing how to sew. But you've got an eye for it. Yeah, but you know what you want to look like and you know what you don't want to look like. Agreed. So use your hot glue gun, learn how to just do a basic hand stitch. And if you can't do that, use a stapler, bitch. Yeah, I think she did a great job. Yeah. I really did. And I was I was glad to see that she was commended for it because it was something that she didn't know. She went in head first and tackled it. She said that she wasn't a seamstress, but she actually delivered. Yeah. Which yeah, is I mean, rare. I mean, it could be worse. You could be Lucy saying you're a singer and can't sing. Ooh, I saw that episode. <laughs> Didn't you? Ooh, we still hearing it. Now, Mistress had an opinion. Shocking! She thought that Malaysia should have been in the bottom. Now, how do you feel about Miss Mistress's blunt, dark energy truths that she lays on everybody? That was thick on thick crime. <laughs> I think it's all in good fun. Yeah. And I love the fact that they're able to banter with each other like that. And it does seem genuine. It does seem like there's a friendship brewing there, which mm -hmm. I think is a good thing. <laughs> now, Mariah, I want to do something that I've been wanting to do this entire season of Pit Stop. <laughs> Turn it's it called, off. Oh. No, it's called Uncross My Leg. <laughs> what was I thinking? Who? Ah! Girl, let it breathe. Ah! I felt the breeze. Let me tell you, don't get your toes pumped and keep your legs crossed. It's quite problematic. You know what helps me? What? my long toe. My second one is a little longer. It gives me that extra support and balance. You're gonna bring up the length of a toe knowing that I just had mine done. Well, hey, I have to have something on you. <laughs> Hopefully not that toe. RuPaul enters and says they're doing golden gal girl groups. That's the maxi challenge. What do you think about that? I feel very triggered. <laughs> Well, okay, so because you had a moment on All Stars mm -hmm. with a golden gal theme, and I don't want you to relive the trauma. Tell well, us. Uh, our challenge was we had to come up with like a luxurious resort suite mm -hmm. and come up with a the theme, and we chose the golden gals. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that was the episode I got kicked off okay. for All Stars. Mm -hmm. But I, I still stand by anything that I do on the show, and I was still very happy. And now, guess what? The girls are bringing the golden gals back. I think I inspired a whole new generation. Look at of you, girls. looking at the positive. I'm so proud of you, Dora bitch. I know you had that one experience with the golden gal moment, mm -hmm. but do you think the group challenges work? I think the group challenges are what you make it. And yeah. you gotta be very careful. If your team isn't picked for you, mm -hmm. be careful in who you're picking. Make sure that you bounce well off each other. Yeah. Communication. Yeah, you can only hope. Yeah. Could you tell me a little more about your girl group experience in All Stars 5? I was wearing Depends during my, my girl group challenge. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was. Like exposed or underneath? Underneath. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. No, it's fine, I'm doing it right now. So the queens get to pick their own groups. Now who would you have chosen to be in your group? Well, the first one's gonna be obvious. My twin, Sasha Colby. Mm -hmm. Selena as titties, mm -hmm. I picked her. Okay. And I would have also picked Anitra. Mm, good, good group. Now who would you have chosen? You know, I would have chosen Malaysia and Mistress. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, if it worked for Beyonce, it could work for me. <laughs> yeah. Notice how I compared ourselves. Love that comparison. Yeah. So before the groups break off, we see the old gays enter as new members of the pit crew. What do you think? You know what? Uh, not only are they a great at a touch, but I think they're an asset. You know, in our community, we have a lot of ageism. Of course. And I think that they are funny, they are vibrant, mm -hmm. and they give a great example that you can thrive well into your older years, yes. your golden years. Yeah, and they also have like great personalities. I mean, they seem like a load of 
make fun. But you know, I wasn't expecting all that body under the club. Girl, I was like, girl. Hey, hold on now. Mm. I like, I'll take them down to Palm Springs. <laughs> So the theme of this episode is obviously old, and now it explains why you're here today. And it's not because Kasha Davis declined, it's because we really wanted you. Oh. Mm, thank you. So there are three types of groups. There is metal, there is country, and there is hip hop. There's a lot of firsts for this season because normally we're assigned the genre. Rue's like, you figure it out. <laughs> no, I think Rue is putting the bitchiness in their hands. Yes! Yes. I think there's gonna be some friction. Yeah. Because everybody is familiar with hip hop. It's yeah. dominating the global music market. So everybody's gonna wanna pick that one first. And hip hop, totally me. I mean, yeah. word. I'm more like hippity hop with his feet until they heal. Uh-huh, yeah. Which one would you have chosen? I probably would have chosen country. Country, I agree, I would have chosen country as well. I Big like hair. Corn fed. Fringe. And it's the one time it's safe to fuck your cousin. Well, not if you live in Louisiana. You do that all the time. <laughs> so of course, as we expected, the queens are now fighting over what they're going to do. And shockingly, there's two groups fighting over metal. What do you think of that? I didn't see that coming. Uh, well, I mean, hey, this is, it's, it's gonna be simple to, to solve. Flip a f coin. It's stupid, right? Actually, be careful what you ask for. Sometimes you, you fight so hard for something and you get it and don't know what to f do with it. Oh yeah, I'm well aware of that. And what's shocking, our pick country, nobody wants it. Nobody wants the country. Why do you think that is? Well, hey, I think it's lack of experience. Lack of experience. Not knowing what to do with it. You know? I think of all the genres, I think the country genre mm -hmm. is more drag friendly. Mm. And we're all about drag friendly here at The Pit Stop. So they can't decide on shit, so they have to do a drawing. They put the names into a hat. And sure enough, Sasha and Malaysia's group get metal. And Lux and Mistress get country. Oh, you know, Mistress is real tight. You know, she got a lot to say about it. Like a stretch mm -hmm. pant. Mm -hmm. I guess the big question is, do you really think that the genre matters? I mean, we see Selena immediately losing her mind because it's country. Yeah. She's like, ah! It's like, oh, what a drama queen. I don't think the genre matters. Yeah. It really boils down to what you do with what you're given. There you are. Yeah, yeah. you say that confidently. Like you've had sex with a small before. And you know what? I figured out what to do with it. I had a little kind of little corn stuck in there and it got it right out. <laughs> that little pickle did the deal. <laughs> did the deal. <laughs> oh my God, I'm tired of working like a gherkin. <laughs> ah, okay. So next we see the girls recording with Leland and Freddie Scott. Do you think some of them are intimidated? Mainly Robin? Yeah, you, yeah. 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 First of all, to record with the artist that made the music yeah. is intimidating because you don't want to fuck up their, their art. Yeah, you want to bring something to it. Yeah, and you don't want to diss it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see Robin struggling? Uh, I, I see Robin struggling quite a bit. This whole season, I really haven't seen much of her. And this is the most that I've seen of her, which looks scared. <laughs> Girl, then we see choreography. Do you find any of them to be great dancers, with the exception of self-proclaimed Marsha times three, who's been on Broadway and worked with large crowds. I know how I am. She must be busy dancing on Broadway and no time to shop for drag. It doesn't matter what you've done, deliver now. And as you're watching them rehearse, is there anybody that you going, yeah, they know what they're doing. Well, I know who doesn't feel like they know what they're doing. Well, tell me that's, who you hate. That's, that's Selena. Mm-hmm. She's, she's talking about everything that she can't do and what she doesn't like. But do you think she's saying that because she's mad about country or is it she just not capable? We saw her lip sync and she delivered, you know, to a performance solo. But do you think she has the goods to actually get through this with the group? She has the goods. Time will tell if they're great. Yeah, what do you think about Lux? I think Lux will pull it together. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Aura? Very cute boy. But well, even if you don't think she's cute, she'll tell you she's cute. cute. Self-proclaimed trade is yeah. really underwhelming for me so far this season. And I think that this one's gonna like come up and bite her in the ass, this challenge. So the next day, the queens have to get into old lady drag mm -hmm. and we see Malaysia and Mistress having a good time together, cackling, bickering, being queens. What do you yeah. think of that? I think Mistress is really warming up to Malaysia. She is. No. I'm, I'm gonna start calling them the M and M's. It's true. I do. I do enjoy them together, and I think they do make me laugh. And it's the thing I love most about drag. So yeah. in my book, I'm living for all of it. 
So we also, in this episode, get to hear a little bit from Sasha Colby. We get a little bit of her history, and we also get a history lesson on trans people in Hawaii at a specific time. And I thoroughly enjoyed hearing what she had to say. And I'm going to ask you, do you think that by having Sasha there, that she's bringing a different perspective than the younger queens? I think Sasha has a very unique perspective for several different reasons. Tell me. Age yes. and experience. Yes. She's successful in yeah. pageant. She's successful in show bars. Mm -hmm. And then she also is a drag performer with trans experience. Mm. And as we all know, trans are a backbone. Yeah. They're an artery of the drag performance world. And what I enjoyed this episode was also just seeing that side of Sasha. So not only is she telling her story, she's also educating the children. Yep. I'm just glad that Sasha is passing down some of the wisdom and experiences that were passed down to her. She's passing it forward to the next generation. Because he's a <laughs> You'll cut that. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about these girl groups. First up is the Banjo Bitches. And in this group, we have Mistress, Lux, Selena, and Marsha times three. I have two standouts, one for a good reason, one for not so good. Good reason, Selena as titties, for me, knocked it out of the park. Even though she verbalized her self-doubt, yeah. some of the other girls might have had self-doubt, but they kept it up here. She verbalized it, mm -hmm. but pushed through it, and I completely, 110% think that Selena delivered on this challenge. Mm, and who was your least favorite? The bitch with no makeup. <gasps> Marsha times three. I was so excited. I don't do character makeup. Mm, you don't? Watching all the other girls. You don't? No. You don't? No. Just chapstick and eyeliner. Some of us don't have to do all that. I'm only doing this because I'm in the witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> Being this close-minded as to think no makeup is the way to go, you're gonna get critiqued every time. I think she failed her team with, with not executing the makeup. That was the bare minimum. As a whole, collectively, what did you think of the banjo bitches? They're the, they're the team to be. Front runner. The front runner. The front runner so far. Yep. I must agree. I feel the same way. Next, we see the rocking OGs, which is the metal group. Yep. And that group consisted of Sasha, Aura, Spice, and Malaysia. Your thoughts? This is a personification of be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And they got got. They got got. What was wrong with it? It just seemed disjointed. I like the verses. Okay. I like the verses. Okay. Of this group, Sasha was my standout. Okay. That's my highlight. What about Aura? After seeing the challenge, I don't think Aura was as bad as she thought she was gonna be. Mm. Okay, that's a very polite way of saying something. I, no, I think she got through it. That's she a got very polite it. way of saying nothing. I mean, really? Did you think she was good or not? I'm gonna have to say not. I thought she was adequate. Okay, but for her... For her, she was good. Okay, got it. For her. For her. For who? For her. For who? Her. For what? For why? For her. She left crumbs. Her. Oh, crumbs. We had a whole discussion about crumbs. I'm well aware now. I brought a little hoover to sweep things up. I don't want no crumbs being left here. You know me, mm -hmm. and I cannot lie, except when it comes to a tax return. And here is a moment where I must fess up and say that I actually liked Aura's performance. If she was stuck in any other group, I may not have liked it, mm -hmm. but I did like it in the metal group. And finally, we see the old, dirty bitches. <laughs> and for once, we're not in the group. And this group was featuring Anitra, Jax, Lucy, and Robin. I mean, who doesn't love a velour track suit? Oh, I love a velour track suit. Soon as I saw them come out in the runway, they looked so comfortable. I loved it. Performance was nice. I think they did a great job. Mm -hmm. I think they did a good job. They executed the challenge. Mm -hmm. But for me, after seeing all three groups, Banjo Bitches is still my pinnacle. You know, I gotta agree with you on this because this, I thought, was lacking. I expected more. Mm. They delivered, but I expected more. Agreed. So it seems like we both decided that the best group overall was the Banjo Bitches. Banjo Bitches. Banjo Bitches, yes. Who was your standout queen? Do you still stand by Selena being your top choice? I stand by my original choice. Miss Selena S. Titties was my standout for this challenge. I think Selena was great. I'm not going to take anything away from it, but after seeing her lip sync the week before, I knew she could do that. Yeah. I think my top surprising pick was Aura. I'm lying. I'm doing it because I'm a good person. Okay. 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 So uh, I did look. I picked Aura. 
Okay. I'm a good person. So, no, I do. I mean, really, let's just call her now and tell her it's <laughs> <laughs> No one is listening to you because they're fascinated how good I could lie about You're all. amazing. And who do you think struggled the most out of all three groups? Somebody that I didn't expect to have to say this about, Anitra. Hmm. The number one thing you need in a lip sync is to sync your lips to the music. Say it again. Say it into your camera. The number one thing you need in a lip sync is to sync your lips to the lick. Get your hand out of my moment. Oh, sorry girl, I was just preaching with you, forgive me. Okay. So what I was saying is, know your words. So now we get to the runway, and before we go any further, can we talk about RuPaul? Yeah. Miss RuPaul has got the girls out tonight. I mean, that skirt, did you see, did you see, yeah. did you see? That skirt was short, and I'm like, damn, bitch, there's hope for me. Ru, if you're watching, I know you're not. You look good, bitch. So the runway category is tie-dye for, get it? I, I see what you did there. Tie-dye. I didn't do it. That's what they told me. Tie-dye. What would you have done for tie-dye? I knew you were going to ask me this question, and I came prepared. Yes. I would wear tie-dye. Ah! We saw that. Let's get to the queens. <laughs> First up, Miss Anitra. For a tie-dye for a challenge, this gave me more love the skin you're in challenge than mm. it did tie-dye. There's just a couple of patches. Most of it was giving me new loot. I don't know if it really fits the theme. I don't see much tie-dye going on. I see a little bleeding watercolor scenario. It's not really packing the punch. It doesn't look bad. I think it's well executed. I just don't know if it fits the runway. She did the bare minimum. Safe. Next up is Jax. I'm not quite sure what's going on with this puff cheesy snack leotard moment. Mm, yeah, I have to agree, uh, but I kind of hate everything else. I don't like the color wig with her skin tone competing with the orange. My eye doesn't know where to go or what to look at. Yeah, mm, it looks like a Petri dish. Yes. A Petri dish of choices. Ooh, it does look like a Petri dish. I said a Petri, not a peach tree I like tree Petri. Dish. I'm from the South, bitch. Next up is Lucy Laduca. It just gets lost. She's got a great silhouette. She's yeah. been consistent with that from the beginning. It is a polished look. It just doesn't seem like it fits the theme of the runway. Next up is Miss Robin Fierce. She looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love the flowy effervescence of the, the garment. I like the Game of thrones -y hair. Still no tie-dye. Still no tie-dye. Still no tie-dye. The color is giving me more ombre than tie-dye. Yeah, I mean, we've said it once, we've said it a million times. She is a beautiful girl and it's a lovely dress. I don't think it fits the runway. Next up, is Mistress Isabella Brooks. And here we are. Finally, we're somewhat approaching tie-dye here. And for the record, let's be honest, it's probably the only queen I know that can wear purple hair successfully. Yeah, we're, we're headed in the right direction. She turned on the GPS. I do like this outfit. And it looks like she's enjoying being in that outfit. Yeah, for me, she's one of the look queens of the season. Very much so. Next up is Lux Noir London. Tie-dye. Finally! Tie-dye! Tie-dye for! Tie-dye for! Lux chooses the perfect colors for her skin tone. Here she took a typical tie-dye variation of colors and turned it into runway glamour. Win, win, win. She puts in the work, she pays attention, yeah. and she delivers. And she, she's made this fashion. She's made it fashionable. I love it. Next up is Mariah's favorite this episode thus far, Miss Selena S. Titties. Well, it's very on brand for mm -hmm. Selena. She mixed mediums, so there she has the tie dyes. So there is she, some there. There's yeah. some there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see she tried to do a petal moment. Mm -hmm. Is it with, a petal? With the paneling up around her clavicle. Mm -hmm. I would have liked if it, if it would have been opened up or if she would have done a little peekaboo. Yeah. Yeah. You know how when you have an animal costume and it's like gray and then the belly is pink? You know, like if somebody's dressed up like a rat or a cat? That's what I'm getting. <laughs> Not my favorite thing that she has worn. Next on the runway is Marsha times three. I'm not gonna read this outfit, but I'm gonna ask you, what the fuck is that? I'm gonna be Look at me! Bring your lazy eye around. Bitch, a nosebleed is not fatal. It's two colors, there's no distinctive tie-dye pattern. Again, it's it frustrates me when people are so dead set on their brand or their gimmick 
their personality gimmick that they completely ignore what the judges ask for. How does it fit in the theme? She's bleeding. Is it attractive? It's basic, it's, yeah. And for me, her performance in the challenge is not enough to save her from this look. Mm. Next up is Sasha Colby. Your thoughts? One word. Finally, somebody turned in their homework. It's good. It's beautiful. This is what I was hoping that people would bring to the runway. Yep. Just something that is a little more festive and fun. She did her homework. She got the message. As the kids say, they ain't no crumbs. Here is Miss Aura Mayari. I really enjoy this. Mm -hmm. She went on the opposite end of like the vibrancy spectrum yeah. with her tie-dye pattern. I really enjoy this. It's like a two-piece play on tuxedo or a pantsuit. Or like lounging pajamas via Bruno Mars. I like it. It's something different that she hasn't worn yet. But can we be honest? Yeah, please. The ponytail looks stupid. It was good until I saw the hair. Thanks for pointing it out. Next up is Spice. Spice has not disappointed me at all thus far this season with her runway looks. Mm -hmm. and this one is no exception. I think she executed it. I enjoy it. It's pretty. Yeah. She's a pretty girl. It's, I think, a safe look, but it does look good on her and it is well done. Remember when our stomachs look like that? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> you almost kept a straight face. I almost kept a straight face. <laughs> oh, but I can't do anything straight anymore because I'm a big old. And finally, we have Malaysia Baby Doll Fox. I like the vibrant colors on her. Yep, colors are pretty. I don't know if I would have made that partition in the middle thinner. So you think proportions are off? Yeah, just a little off. I don't really love it, and I think this could be a problem for her because she wasn't a standout in the metal group number that she did. Yeah, I won't push her off the stage for the look. No. But I'm definitely not going to like put in an order to have one made. Mm-hmm. So you've seen all 12 girls on the runway. Who was your favorite look? In the spirit of Spice, I'm going to pick my twin, Sasha Colby. Sasha Colby. I think my top pick from the runway this time is Aura's only because it was different. It was different. And it was a different side of her that I saw, and I thought, yeah, that's a cool outfit. After the judges' critiques, we find out that our winner for this episode is Aura. Do you think the judges got it right? I will say I definitely didn't see it coming, mm. but after seeing the improvement, yeah. I'm on the judges' side. And sadly, in the bottom, was Robin Fierce and Jax. Do you agree with those two being in the bottom? 100% agree. Performance only or performance and runway combined? Performance and runway looks. I agree. Now, Robin and Jax have to lip sync to In Your Room by The Bangles. What'd you think of it? I was really impressed with Robin. Mm -hmm. Like, her selling the song, her vibe, her whole mood for the song yeah. was right on brand. I think that it was clean, effective. Jax, I think, missed the mark with the mood of the song. And me, I saw the stunts, but that's all I saw. Well, I gotta agree with you on one part of this. I was a little disappointed in Jax as well, but not for the same reason. Mm. I was disappointed in Jax mainly because it was my choreography. No credit! No credit. I thought, um, I thought Jax did a great job. I thought it was the first time I've seen Jax alive. It was the first time that I could see Jax actually own it. And once again, that's what the lip sync is about. I do know what you mean about Robin because Robin had a handle on the song and you don't have to be a dancer or a flipper or all that madness. I just thought you could see and feel the energy and the excitement in Jax that was brought to the stage. They were on it, they owned it, and they delivered. So I have to agree with the judge's decision. And sadly, we had to say goodbye to Robin. We do, but we do love you, Robin. You're absolutely a gorgeous gal, and I would love to know more about her, but that's why we have all stars. If we had to pick someone, who would be your front runner? I can't pick two, I, one. Pick two, okay. I'll make an exception for you. Anitra. Mm, okay and Sasha Colby. Good, good, good. And that would be a good performance battle too. Oh, that would be. I agree with you. That would be exciting. I love the M&M's Malaysia and Mistress. So I don't really have a front runner right now, but I have lots of pots on the stove brewing. Ah, well, that's it. Thank you, Mariah, for being here today. You are simply the best. <laughs> Although everybody on the internet says you are the worst. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. I just have one favor to ask. Yeah. 
could you finally leave my tickets at Will Call for your next tour? Sure. Last time I was standing in line, it was a soup kitchen. <laughs> and I must thank you for watching The Pit Stop with me, Bianca Del Rio. And make sure you tune in next week where you can catch us recapping another episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15. Thank you and goodbye. Okay, next group of cards. That's a good sign. Ooh, stand up, straighten up my back. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My moose knuckle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Home stretch, kids. Home stretch, kids. Everyone will be home shortly watching porn. Yes. Do you want? <laughs> oh, yeah. Am I greasy? No, no, I just want you to look at it if you need. Oh, you want but, me to look at how bad I look? Oh, my God. <laughs> Sad little Debbie Gibson Pinocchio look I got going on. Oh, hey, everybody. It's Michelle Visage. Do you want Emmy nominated gay? Well, then subscribe to RuPaul's Drag Race on YouTube.